Hi everyone, Tom here from Get CT Owned, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to rip vinyl like a pro. Let's rock! Hi everyone, welcome to another Get CT Owned video. And uh, if you uh, appreciate music, love music as much as I do, hopefully you'll have a nice, uh, nice vinyl collection, vinyl record collection. Um, Hopefully it's all original vinyl, old vinyl, but um, some new vinyl is nice to have as well. I know I've got a bit of new vinyl, but most of this I uh, I nicked from my old man, my dad, who is currently filming. Um, stolen record collection. So there's five things you really need to do to get a good result when trying to make a digital copy of a vinyl record. The first one is cleaning. Um, best way you can do that is with a vacuum wet cleaning machine such as this. This one happens to be a Project VCS record cleaning machine. Um, but you can do it by hand if you want. You can get some um, manual movement, uh, spin care, I believe, um, vinyl record machines when you just turn the record through some wet brushes by yourself. Um, they get all right results. I've done it myself um, until, until I decided to invest in one of these. Um, and you can't compare anything else to the results that this machine gets you. And it's important to start with a clean record um, when you're trying to rip, because if you start with a, if you start with a, a dirty record in, you're gonna get a dirty recording out. Um, second thing to do is obviously record the record itself. So obviously analog medium, you have to um, effectively just record the output um, throughout the whole length of the album, single, whatever. There's no um, high speed 52 times ripping like you get with a with a CD um, doing this. So you've got to be prepared to, to have the time to let the album play through. And it's also um, a really good idea to listen to it at the same time as you're doing that, because not only do you get to appreciate the record, um, you'll know as soon as there's a problem, um, i.e. If, if it skips, if there's some grit on the surface or something that, that's going to ruin your recording anyway and you don't find out to a later date, you'll hear it, you'll hear it on the spot. Um, third step you do on a computer and that's processing the unwanted noise. There's a few good programs out there that help you do this and remove clicks, remove rumble, um, remove static noise. I'll share my recommendations as we go through this process um, and you'll see when we start recording my screen and actually going onto the computer later on. Um, but eff effectively you're looking to reduce any unnecessary sound that isn't part of the music, pops, clicks, hiss, etc. Um, fourth step optional um, is boosting the level. Uh, you will notice straight away that when you record a vinyl record, your level is uh, level of your recording is a lot lower, a lot quieter than a, than a modern digital version of the same thing, um, such as a CD or an MP3 download, whatever. Um, and that's due to um, compression wars or loudness wars. Um, modern mastering, um, it's like a competition for loudness. So they raise the level of the quiet parts. Um, and they reduce the level slightly of the peaks and they squash it all in and then raise the overall volume. That's known as compression. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that um, because you're ruining the original dynamics of the recording. There's, if, if you're changing what the record sounds like, what's the point of doing this? You might as well go and buy the CD. Um, but you can do something called normalizing, um, which uh, normalizes to a max peak usually and just bumps the level a bit if you've got a bit of headroom to play with and you've cut off any um, anomalies like uh, clicks or anything that are, that are high peaks. Last one is splitting up the tracks. Um, unless you want a single continuous file in your in your digital music collection, I know I don't. You'll split the tracks up. There are there is automatic software that does this. Um, but if if you're listening to listening to a record or, you, or you've got a record with great quiet bits. Um, that software is quite easily confused through my experience. So I do this whole process manually. You can't beat it. It will get you the best results. One more step that I haven't included in these five is file conversion because it's a personal preference based on how you store your digital music. Um, this process will end up with a high quality uncompressed web file um, for each track on, on what you've ripped. And uh, you can go and convert that if you want to FLAC, MP3, AAC, whatever. I'm not going to cover that because it's personal preference, but once you've got that far, that bit's easy. So anyway, guys, um, let's jump straight into our first step and uh, get a record on my Project VCS here, clean it up. I'll show you, show you how I do it. And then we'll go on to 
recording the record itself, go onto the computer, process the unwanted noise, boost the level a little bit, split the tracks, and that'll complete the process. Let's go. Right then, here we are, step one. Um, gonna clean a record. So here we have uh, my Project VCS vacuum cleaning machine. Um, essentially, it's just a hoover in a box um, with a spindle on it that rotates the record. We apply fluid, we brush, and we suck all the fluid out of the grooves, and that's why it's so effective. Um, so there's various different fluids and stuff that you can use, and this video, we're not gonna go into detail. I happen to like the Luart Disson um, concentrate, which you mix with distilled water, not tap water, you'll end up with rubbish all over the records. Um, but equally as good, in my experience, the Project's own brand Wash It um, concentrate mix of distilled water does, does a great job as well. So, um, first things first, got our record, line it up and screw the clamp on, and then start the machine spinning. Here's some Luart Disson fluid I prepared earlier. I apply that to the record, you don't have to go overboard, but too much is better than not enough. We then get our brush and we spread the fluid over the record. I'm not applying too much pressure, I'm just spreading it throughout so it gets into all the grooves. Once you spread it out evenly, the record should be pretty much flat and shiny like that. Should get a nice zoomed in shot now. When it's like that, I'll let it set for a bit and I will just let it brush round a couple of rotations, medium sort of pressure just to work the fluid into the grooves. On this particular unit, I can reverse the direction like that, and brush again in the other direction. Once that's done, drop the vacuum arm on, and start the vacuum, watch your ears. <laughs> Okay, so we've now vacuumed off the first side. And if I hold this up for you to have a look at, you should see we've got a very, very shiny looking record if we can get focus on that because it's so shiny and black. Now, if this was a record I was about to genuinely rip and hadn't cleaned earlier, I'd do the other side, but I'm gonna skip that and go on to the next step, which isn't necessary for everything, however, um, I like to do it just uh, if, you, if you're putting this much time and effort into cleaning a record there's no harm in this extra step which takes a minute or two and that's I just rinse the record in some clean distilled water spray it on I've got a clean rinse brush I'm actually just let that go around a couple of times and this is just to get any uh, any excess cleaning fluid out of the grooves. Probably not necessary, some people swear by it, some people don't. But like I say, if you go into this extent to clean a record, why not go the whole hog? Drop the vacuum arm on. <laughs> And that there's probably just about as clean as you're gonna get that record. Um, you can run it through a couple of times if you really want, up to you, but this delivers fantastic results, this process. If there's a little bit of stubborn bit of grit or grime that you can see on the surface of the record, um, or any gunk on it that that's not getting off. Um, if we just look over here, I've got a, a soft mat. Um, this is the vinyl cleaning work mat that we can place a record on. And what I would essentially do is just drip some fluid onto it manually. And I would scrub back and forth with my brush um, until I've got whatever's off. I'd then drop it back onto the vacuum cleaning machine to hoover off all that liquid, rinse it again, 
Um, and that's basically as far as you can go when it goes to cleaning a record without without just going stupid. So that's the first step, guys. Cleaning your record. We've got a nice clean product to start with, and let's move on to the actual uh, to the actual meet your partner process. So on to the next step, guys, and that's obviously um, recording playback of the record itself. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, one is with a standalone setup like this, and what I mean by that <clears throat> is I don't have to connect a computer via USB or whatnot to record the uh, vinyl playback to do the actual ripping process itself. Um, rather, I have a standalone recorder in my setup. In this case, it's a Tascam SD20M that records directly on to an SD card. Um, you don't have to use a unit this expensive or this big. You can actually do the same thing with a smaller handheld unit like this Tascam DR05. It features a TRS line in at the top and you can in fact get an RCA to TRS cable and feed it line level in that way and achieve the same thing. Um, Advantages to this setup is I don't have to turn a computer on when I want to rip a record. It's standalone. It's part of my hi-fi. I don't have to unplug any cables or anything. Um, it just works. Um, the other benefit is when you look at the other way in which it's done with, say, a USB turntable or a USB audio interface, you record into a program such as Audacity, for example, or Reaper, maybe. Um, and that works fine. However, you then need to take into consideration um, optimizing your computer for audio processing, for audio usage, for audio capture. And you have to be aware of the Windows driver stack and Windows mixer, and things like that. And then you have some limitations from programs like Audacity, which in, in certain modes um, is limited to certain sample rates of bit depths, etc. Um, I just personally think it's easier to build yourself a standalone setup for the whole audio capture process, and then just use the computer for process post processing after the capture. Um, I think it's a much safer and much more streamlined way to do it. So um, looking at this, this is a Technics SL twelve ten GR with an Autofon two M blue head shell. Obviously. The more solid your turntable, the high, higher quality the components, higher quality the cartridge, um, probably the better sound you're going to get. But again, it, it is sort of personal preference, so there's nothing, nothing set in concrete here. This is just my, my example of, I, I'd, I'd like to say, a fa fairly nice setup. Um, it is it's expensive compared to, compared to quite a lot of other things that are available, but it gets good results. To my ears, anyway. This feeds into a Cambridge Audio 640p phono preamp, which runs into my Rotel preamp there. And like I said earlier, I have a Tascam SD20 solid state recorder down here, which is set in the tape loop of my Rotel preamplifier. So I don't have to unplug anything, it's permanently connected. So that will record me a 2496 WAV file. Um, to the SD card, which I can then transfer to the computer and begin processing. Now, on the subject of um, what file format, web versus MP3, what um, bit depth sample rate you want to use, there's a lot of there's a lot of arguments online. There's a lot of scientific merit for um, being able to fit a vinyl rip perfectly within. 16-bit um, 441 CD quality. Um, however, being from the wonderful world of computers, hence the channel name, gets CT owned. I, I, I'm in favour of using as high a quality format as you can based on your storage space situation. And storage space is cheap. It's cheaper than it's ever been. It's incredibly cheap. So there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be, or why you can't rather, recording 2496 or even 24192 if you really wanted to, but I can't and um, hey ho. I don't know if there's any audible benefits to recording in 2496. However, it is the highest quality format available to me and storage space is not of a concern to anyone nowadays with this stuff. So 
my advice recording the highest quality format you can um, I prefer a standalone setup like this with a with a recorder built into my system whether it's a big one like that or a small one like this but of course the other way to do it is using USB audio interface or a USB turntable and recording onto the computer so of course the uh, steps to follow now is just um, arm the Tascam for record set the needle down enjoy both sides of your record hit stop and then we'll move over to the computer ok everyone so welcome to step 3 of how to rip vinyl like a pro um, so so far we've made sure we've got a good clean record and we've recorded playback um, on the turntable now you've seen my setup I do it with a standalone Tascam SD20M recorder um, and I'm going to stick by what I say and say that's the best and most effective way to do this keep a computer out of the process for as long as possible until you need to which is for this step post processing um, if you had been using USB turntable or something you'd have already been on the computer you'd have already had something like uh, Audacity open and recorded on the computer but in my case I have grabbed the SD card out of the Tascam and copied my um, raw WAV file onto the computer. So here you see I've got a couple of examples in front of me that I have done earlier. So these are the raw, this is a single raw WAV file um, that's come out of the Tascam. Um, it's unedited, it's quite large, 1.48 gig and this is ready for processing. Now at this point I'm going to introduce you to some software that I like to use. Um, may or may not be the best but I get absolutely fantastic results um, with my workflow um, and hence I'm going to show you what I use. So my audio editor of choice is Audacity. I've used it for many 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 years. It's free, it works. Um, I'm not a massive fan of it as a recording program but as a, as a tool to process audio, split the tracks, etc. I find it does a great job. The second program I'm going to introduce you to is um, Click Repair. So I come across this program from um, first getting into ripping vinyl myself after doing a bit of googling, doing a bit of research and um, Click Repair does an absolutely fantastic, I'll probably say market leading job of removing clicks and pops from your raw recordings. Um, it's quite cheap to buy, but um, it, even, even, even though it does cost money, this is a fantastic piece of software and you need to, and you should definitely have it in your workflow. Um, my other paid for piece of software that I use is DB Power Amp. Now I use this um, for CD ripping in my digital collection as well. However, it comes with an absolutely fantastic um, file format converter and a fantastic um, ID tag editor as well. Um, so this just makes interacting with digital music formats so much easier and so much more straightforward. And it's an all-in-one package. So I highly recommend DB Power Amp, Audacity and Click Repair. Um, and those will be what I'm using for the rest of this video. So moving on. Um, I have my raw file here. We're going to use ACDC's high voltage. I'm not going to let you hear any of the audio because copyright issues. Um, the first thing we need to do is open this in Click Repair. So I'm going to open Click Repair. Now there are some presets here, and default it comes up default LP with D click set to 50. Um, I find that to be a little aggressive at times. And the important thing to know about audio processing and click removal, noise removal, is you want to be as gentle as you possibly can. Because if you've got quiet passages in music, etc., um, or delicate sections, you, you can very easily ruin them and remove audio, whereas you, you, all you wanted to do was remove noise. So I err on the side of caution and I drop my D-click down to 30 and I enable pitch protection. If you want to know more about all of these features, the 
the click repair manual is huge and I suggest you read it. But this these are my settings um that I that I work with and I have fantastic results. D click thirty pitch protection ticked. At that point I click open and I select my raw WAV recording. Um, at this point, it's prompting you for an output file. You'll notice it's got the same name, but with a suffix of dash CR for click repair. I'll let that go into there, and I'll click start. At this point, you can see the uh, the clicks it's found and highlighted, and it's going to remove as it whizzes past up the top. Okay, that's now complete, so I'm going to go ahead and close Click Repair. And you'll see here I have a file with the same name as my raw web, except it's got dash CR at the end. At this point, it's time to start organizing our working files. Um, so I'm just going to create a folder. And organize my, my material here so I don't get muddled up. I'm going to call this the raw stuff. Next thing I'm going to do is open the click repaired web with Audacity and uh, we'll begin processing. In Audacity, it offers you a couple of options for opening files. Uh, do you want to copy them in or read them directly? I always copy them, it's safer. It won't damage your original source file should something happen, like your machine crash when you're working on it or you've got it open, something like that. Okay, so now you can see we have our uh, click repaired um, file open in Audacity. So at this point, I just do a couple of obvious things. Um, for example, zoom in on with control scroll, scroll wheel the gap between the two sides and just delete the obvious needle drop pops. If you've got any runoff in the end as well, prefer to just delete that out at this point. And then at the beginning section where the needles dropped, delete that as well. Just try and get, get the recording as clean without un, any unnecessary sounds, peaks, etc. as possible. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is apply a high pass filter which deals with any subsonic rumble um, that may have been picked up caused by the turntable motor, caused by playing it back too loud through speakers while doing this, or caused by cars and lorries going past outside. Things that the human ear can't really hear but may be on this and consuming some of the space in our, in our uh, recording. So I control A to select everything and I go to effect and a high pass filter. Um, I would suggest running this at 20 to 30 hertz um, because there are genuinely um, audible sounds above sort of that area, 40 hertz upwards, that, that may genuinely be on the recording. But anything below 20 hertz is is that there's nothing there useful to us. Um, so I apply that filter with a 24 dB roll off, which is a very sharp filter, and apply it there. And that will remove any um, really, really low subsonic frequencies um, from the recording. That can actually be done um, in some phono preamplifiers automatically. I know mine, uh, my Cambridge 640p Phono Pre has a subsonic filter switch on the back, which will do something uh, similar in real time. Um, and even if you enable that during the recording process, um, I'd still suggest doing it here because you've, you've seen it, you've done it yourself, you know it's happening. So now that's done, it's always good to, to play some of the recording back and see what you think. Like I say, I, I, I'm, I won't be able to play you this audio um, due to copyright reasons um, but I'm going to make sure I talk in detail through each step as I'm doing it so you understand what's going on. Okay so that still sounds fantastic to me there's plenty of bass in the recording still 
um, cutting off at 20 hertz has had no, no effect on the fullness and bass on the record. So the next thing I do after that is apply some noise reduction in general to the record. Now in Audacity this is done by taking a sample of pure noise and then use, using that to get a noise profile and applying that to the whole record. Now this is a very powerful tool and you should be very, very careful with it. Now I actually used um, the Audacity Guide, Vinyl Ripping Guide, as um, a starting point um, when I've done all this. So I still use it for uh, suggestions on the noise reduction settings. So if we just take a quick look at that, and we look at um, remove hiss and high frequency noise, um, and you'll see it makes some suggestions here. Noise reduction, nine dB is a good gui guideline. Sensitivity six, and no more uh, three or lower is a good setting on frequency smoothing for music. So those are the settings that I use as a guideline. So what I like to do is um, use a bit of my intro groove as a um, as a space to get the noise profile. So select a bit there, make sure there is no music there and it is just groove noise. Highlight that, go to effect, go to noise reduction and you'll see my settings there, 9, 6 and 3. Hit get, new, get noise profile and now we need to select everything with control A and do noise reduction and hit OK. At this point it's going to apply noise reduction to your whole recording. This takes a couple of minutes usually. Um, so I'll probably chop this section out like I have done it for a couple of last sections. OK, so now noise reduction has applied. Um, you will notice that most of the noise in the intro section and any um, sections which were just noise has disappeared. Um, but at this point, I would advise and say it's probably very important to have a listen um, to various parts of the recording, especially quiet sections, and make sure you're happy with what you've got. Make sure nothing has been removed that you wanted to keep. So just have a listen. So I'll be happy with that section. Um, go to the fade outs here. Yeah, very good. So I'm just listening to various sections to make sure noise reduction hasn't removed anything that I wanted to keep. I suppose it does help when you're doing this to be very familiar with the record itself. Um, so you know what should be there and uh, can identify if anything's gone. So I'd say I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, and we can move on to the next step. So at this point we've um, run a high pass filter on it. We have um, applied noise reduction. We've trimmed the ends, we've tri trimmed the gap in the middle. Um, so it would be time to apply some uh, normalisation, which is step four, um, or five, can't remember if I've got them the wrong way around. Um, I believe this is step four, and this is to increase the level uh, somewhat, to, to get it up there a bit so you don't notice a huge volume drop when uh, uh, changing between a digital copy, uh, a modern digital copy or a vinyl rip. Now to do this you're going to use um, peak normalization um, and what you'll find is if your recording still contains peaks um, like this one down here for example you're not going to get much headroom i.e. you'll go to normalize to minus 0 0.5 dB and that peak is already there or almost exceeding that um, and therefore there is no room to raise the volume level because that peak will exceed that number. So we need to just scan the recording and see if we've got any high peaks that are going to ruin our normalization process. 
So I can see one there. Let me just scan along. That looks like all of them. I mean, this could be just an anomaly in the pressing. The recording might have a really high peak in one section, or it could be a click or a pop that the click repair and noise reduction process hasn't managed to remove. But what we can do is we can zoom in real tight to this area of the record. Um, almost so we can nearly see the individual samples. And we can just highlight that bit there and go to Effect and Amplify. And we can actually bring the amplification down a bit like that. And you'll see that takes that peak away from the limit. And what that's going to allow us to do is apply normalization and lift the rest of the track up in volume level. Um, by de-amplifying or reducing the gain on these tiny little samples here, they are so small that you will not notice a difference um, and it's likely that they are clicks or pops. So if we zoom back out now, you will see that we haven't got those really big peaks anymore. Um, there are a couple of areas which might do with a little bit of reduction, but um, at the end of the day, we do have volume controls in our equipment for a reason. Um, you're never going to make this recording match the volume of a modern um, CD rip, for example, because it's been compressed big time. And uh, that raises all the quiet parts um, to the same level as the loud parts and affects the dynamic range. Um, we don't want to do that because, like I said in the intro to the video, if you're editing the, the dynamics of the record, the sound of it, the difference between quiet and loud, there's there's no point in doing this. You you want to preserve as much of the original sound as possible and just try and bump the overall volume um, so you, you don't end up having to a, having a crank up what you're, uh, what you're playing it on. So now it's time to select everything. And we're going to go to Effect and Normalize. And... I use the default settings, uh, remove DC offsets. You can read more about that on the Audacity ripping guide, but that's essentially where the waveform isn't centered on zero. Um, not entirely sure that it's ever caused me a problem, but I just leave it with the default settings. Um, normalize peak amplitude. You can normalize to dead on zero dB, but I prefer to normalize so just shy of that, just under at minus 0 0.2. So if we OK that, and this will run through, what we should, should see is a nice little bump in volume across the whole track. And there we go. We've got a nice little bump in volume, and you'll see it was limited by this peak here. So if we really wanted to, we could remove that, and we could squeeze some more volume out of it in this one here. But you got volume controls, just turn it up um, and giving yourself a little volume increase overall this way as opposed to compression preserves the dynamics of the record um, at the same time. So that's the end of step four, boosting your volume level. Um, sort of optional, but I recommend it. Um, and that takes us on to the fifth, um, the fifth step in this process, which is track splitting. Now, there's various ways to do this. You can highlight and copy and cut out if you want, but I like to use track labels or labels in Audacity. So the way I prefer to do it is zoom in so I've got a per second view on my Audacity timeline here, something like that. And come out of it maybe like that and I'll just trim off the start there and we have the start of our recording here at this point if you hit control B you can add a label and this is where I put the track names in so for sake of argument I'm going to put one track one now by time or by listening your choice you can skip through the recording and find where the end of that track is or where track two begins. You can usually easily identify if you've got fade outs like this, but not everything's like that. And you don't want to be chopping anything off. So have a listen, use a track listing of the album or uh, record that you're ripping as a time guide and then use your ears and eyes to do the rest. So 
also remember to insert a label at the beginning of the first track, otherwise you'll miss it. So I put my track one in, and now I've got track two starting here. And I'll put that in there. And uh, then obviously let I can zoom ahead and find the ending of that track. Let's say, for example, it was there. I can then control B again to insert another label. And so on. Now, for the sake of quickness, I'm just going to whiz through this and put some tracks in random places for you. Obviously, you'll have the uh, where you flip the record over in here somewhere. Um, you saw me trim some of it out at the beginning of this process, beginning of this step. But um, go in there and tidy it up some more unless you want uh, an extra large gap at the end of a song. So I've just made some labels like this to represent tracks. They're not accurate. Now, once you've done that, you've got all your track positions labelled up. You're ready to go to File, Export, and Export Multiple. Now, I like to refer to my folder I created earlier. And I will make a new folder called Split for the split tracks. Now, this is the format you can uh, save them in. So I'm using 2496, like I said earlier. So make sure it is a 2496 file, 96 kilohertz, uh, 96 hertz project rate, um, and 24 bit PCM. So I'm going to split the files based on labels and I'm using the label and track name. I hit export. You'll see some stuff I've done here earlier, but importantly, it's the track title that is going to have the label name. And that's what that's what you'll use to identify the split track. So we click OK, 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 OK. And what you'll see when we're done is we now have a set of web files that represent each of our tracks. So at this point, we can close Audacity. You do or don't have to save it, it's up to you. Once I've got the webs out, I don't bother. Um, and at this point, I would use DB PowerAmp, edit ID tag tool, set the artist for all of the files, set the album, and I can select my album artwork as well from um, from the internet, from the built-in album art chooser on here. Um, after this step, um, you are actually complete. You now have uh, individual web files named up correctly and tagged um, with the with the artist and track information, the album information on there. Um, these are 2496 web files, um, so very high quality, and they are quite large. So for my own collection, I will right-click um, and use the Convert to Context menu from DB Power Amp, and I will encode to FLAC like this. Once that's done, it's organized by type, and I will remove my original webs. And here I have a set of FLAC files taking up less space, as you can see. Um, they are 2496, very high quality, and I will store them away in my digital collection with the rest of my vinyl rips. And um, there you go, guys. You now have, um, hopefully, some fantastic sounding um, digital copies of your vinyl um, 
like I say, there, there are some there are some points in this process which are obviously going to be different based on you, based on your own personal setup. But um, the the way I've been been doing this, I think I've been getting some fantastic results. Results. I wrote a guide um, with pictures on the Vinyl Engine forum, so go check that out if you want. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll probably make some more along the subject of hi-fi and vinyl. Um, and focus in on some specific areas like cleaning, maybe you might review my turntable, something like that. And uh, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you.